If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to the Spirit Guides podcast, our Wednesday Align series, where we talk about how to bring spirituality into your business and into the world and into your community. So I am your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual business coach. And with me, as always, is Catherine Larnager, spiritual business coach, amazing person, and my best friend here in Boquete. So we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So we are. I think the coffee just kicked in. (laughs) (laughs) Finally. We're in trouble. (laughs) Finally. Finally. (laughs) We're in trouble now. All right. So today we're going to be talking about the panic pivot, right? And this is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's something I did ad nauseum for like 10 or 12 years of my career in this work. Oh my God. Switch, (laughs) switch, switch, switch. And I see it happen all the time. So let's define it first. So the panic pivot is that moment where you launch something, you give it a week, maybe two, for the avalanche of people to come in and say yes. And when they don't, you go, oh, maybe this isn't the right thing. Maybe the universe wants me to do something else. Let me go do something else entirely. Don't let me continue to to troubleshoot what I'm doing and make it better and incrementally improve and all the things. No, 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 don't do that. (laughs) Let's go do something completely different and see if the universe puts a little stamp of approval on that. We'll give that two weeks and then we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spent about 10 or 12 years doing that. (laughs) It's like that squirrel syndrome, right? Or shiny object syndrome. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 So if if this if you're starting to feel called out, I I, I still love you. It's okay. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> That's but, right. Uh, you know, we're we're going to talk to you about how to avoid that in the future because that is one of the biggest ways of resisting success in your business is this constant pivot, 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 pivot thing because you're not committing to a path. Mm-hmm. And so let's, let's, I'm going to start off a little bit with the, the underpinning of this, which is you're treating the universe as a parent, not a partner. And when you're waiting for the stamp of approval on your forehead for your project, you're treating the universe as a parent, not a partner. And so you're, the universe is your partner, It is not the authority figure over you. And this is where, you know, a lot of the Christian construct and the, you know, traditional religious, not just Christian, but any, any religious construct that has a higher being that, that is there to, you know, pass judgment on you. This is a fallacy in the belief structure of how the universe works. The universe is your partner. You are the universe and the universe is you. There is no one above you telling you what's right or wrong. And so when you wait for approval from the universe, it's it's really you saying, I don't approve of myself mm-hmm. because you are the universe and the universe is you, right? And so when you are waiting for approval, you're not going to have success in your business because your expectation is... I don't know if I'm getting approval or not. And so I'm going to wait and see what happens. And so there's no juiciness to the energy of what you're putting out, right? You know, there's ways in which the energy can be impacted by what we do. You know, for instance, I'm running a retreat right now, or I'm enrolling for a retreat that's happening in November. And the retreat venue changed, uh, they they took a wall down, which meant that we didn't have any place to meet anymore. And, 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 you know, we had to move to another venue. And I couldn't figure out why only my students were enrolling in this retreat. And then that happened. And I was like, oh, well, that would be why, right? Because energetically, people could feel that it wasn't solid. And to be fair, I had I hadn't really actually gotten them nailed down on the contract. We had agreed on everything, but they hadn't sent me the actual documents. And so... Now that it's solid, people will start enrolling again, right? So energetically, we do have issues we have to address that happen out in the world. But this is not one of them. 
Okay. <laughs> the panic pivot is internal. It is not an external thing. It is not a, oh, they don't like my offer or they don't, you know, this isn't the right thing. Now, you know, are, are there ways that offers can be improved and things can be improved? Absolutely. That's true. But this is an internal game. This is a resistance to success by saying, oh, I don't know if this is the right thing. Maybe it's the right thing. I'm not sure. Well, if you're not sure, nobody else is going to be sure and nobody's going to sign up. You need to get sure, right? So this is a commitment issue. So uh, what's your thoughts, Catherine? You know, I think, Kelly, what's coming up for me is that it's a it's also a trust issue, right? So there's that, and you kind of alluded to that, there's that trust in the universe and also trust in self. So when you made that decision to take to take an action and you know move in a certain direction and maybe at the kind of level of fact what you're seeing you're, you're not getting the results that you think you should be getting like really really fast and so it's like it's a sign it's a sign right but you're you're lacking that trust in in yourself your decision in the universe and then what happens i think is that people can get caught up in the the energy of the the belief around it's not happening. You know, I made the bad decision. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm moving in the wrong direction. <laughs> and then you give your power to that, you start to focus on that. And then you get more of it. So we know that, you know, the power of intention and focus, we get more of what we're, what we're attending to. And so, you know, when you're, I think when you're stuck in that panic pivot, or when you're noticing that maybe there's a pattern there, I think there's a couple ways that we can maybe talk about how to reframe it so that it becomes a more empowering experience if you're open to that conversation. No, absolutely not. I don't want to have that conversation. No, I'm so, of so, course uh, we're going to have that conversation. Tell, tell me more about that. Tell me what's tell coming me what you up right now. Yeah, this is a stupid conversation. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine's got her coaching voice on. So she's doing a standard coaching thing, which is to ask permission before giving advice. Oh. And so if you are coaching, make sure you have that because that's a really good tool. So yeah, that's what you just saw happen. And so I just messed with yeah. her because I'm not the yeah. coach. I'm not oh, totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and you know, we've talked about this too. The universe loves playfulness. It loves fun, oh, yes. right? This is this is an experiment. Okay. So so I think one of the ways that you can reframe it is you've got when you start to notice that you're in the panic pivot or that maybe there's been a pattern of showing up that way, the default for most people tends to be to want to shame yourself, blame yourself, make yourself wrong. And that's just super low vibration. So that's yeah. not going to actually help you to shift anything at all. It keeps you stuck in a pattern that's not, you know, supporting you and getting the results that you want in your life. So when you notice, oh, that's me. Okay. So the reframe there could be, wow, I've really been in some experimentation here, haven't I? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, mean, and I, I just want to... I just have to jump in for a second because this is a key factor that I talk to people about. And I just want to, I want to talk about that, that, you know, shame, blame eh, cycle, right? Because yeah. that is the difference between the master and the apprentice on the spiritual path in anything, right? So if you, if you think this is the path, right, the, the, the line down the center of the screen is the path and you get off the path and the master We'll go, oh, I'm off the path and come back. And oh, I'm off the path and come back. And oh, I'm off the path. Everybody spends the same amount of time or, you know, same amount of distance that they they hop off the path a lot. We all hop off the path a lot, right? But the, the difference is the master gets back on very quickly. But the apprentice will go all the way over here and before they realize that they are off the path. And then they'll go, oh, my God, I suck. I suck. I really suck. I can't believe how much I suck. And they're all over the place with the self self-flagellation before they come back to the path and then they do the same thing on the other side and so it's it, it the difference between the master and the apprentice is just how long does it take you to notice that you're off the path and how much time do you waste beating yourself up before you come back on the path the sooner you can notice and the 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 less you self-abuse the faster you reach mastery so mm -hmm. that's the piece i just wanted to add in there I love that. And that 
totally fits with the panic pivot topic too, Absolutely. right? So Absolutely. So, and it, uh, oh my God, there's like just so much to talk about. We could just talk for hours, hours <laughs> on this, but I know like all you have lives and, you know, probably have other things that you're going to be getting on <laughs> with your day as well. So, no, they don't. No, they no, don't. No, that's right. This is your <laughs> life. This is your life. So, so, you know, and we're going to talk about this in a future episode as well as identity, right? That that, mm-hmm. that mastery. So when you're on the spiritual path and, and when you're on the business path, when you're on the self-development path, when you're on any kind of path at all, it's about the identity of the person who is, you know, living into what it is that you want to create and experience. And it's not about making your current identity wrong or how you're showing up now wrong. So the when you kind of get off the path and, and in your example of spiritual mastery, you know, there can be that tendency with the shame blame to, to, to really pitch a tent in that and really like wrap yourself up in it. And that doesn't help you, right? It doesn't help. It's familiar for sure, but it's not helpful. Right. So when you when you notice, when you're noticing, oh, okay, this maybe, maybe there's a little bit of panic pivoting that I've been doing, or maybe there's a little bit of kind of self, you know, self-blame and shame and judgment and flagellation. And 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 if you're noticing that, I'm just giving you like a big high five and I'm saying, congratulations, you're a human being, you're winning. Because that's what we all do. It's what we all do. So you notice it. And then in that noticing, you give yourself choice, you give yourself choice. So a couple of things I want to talk about is that, you know, I think like so many people have this idea that business is going to be easy. If it's not happening really fast, I'm doing it wrong. And that's what can lead to the panic pivot. So, so there's a, you know, when you're noticing that you're in that pattern, I'm going to invite you to reframe it first. Wow, look at me. I've been in a lot of experimentation. And, you know, within that experimentation, there's probably some stuff that I've learned. So within that learning, you there's there's an opportunity to really go to a place of neutrality, right? So so often we we label things, it's good, it's bad, it's right, it's wrong, I'm on, I'm off. When we can be neutral about it, then we invite in more curiosity. So, okay, well, that's interesting. Look at that. I've been kind of doing some of that. Huh, isn't that interesting? I wonder what I've learned, right? So if I can be neutral about it and look, well, I tried this thing there. And at the level of fact, that was the result I had or didn't have. But what did I learn from it? And so when you can have that neutrality, then you can start to look at the lessons And then from those lessons, you can then create a plan. So in business, you want to have, you know, you want to have a a direction, you want to have, and you want to kind of keep that direction long enough to actually notice if it's actually happening. Because two weeks isn't generally long enough. No. Within that, you know, I think giving yourself permission and knowing that you're going to be looking at incremental gains. Yeah. So so I've I've just said a lot. I want to open it up and I don't want to hog the mic here. (laughs) <laughs> one of the one of the biggest one, the the single best piece of advice I ever got, the thing that turned around my business was from Taki Moore, who's a coach out in the world there. And he said, do one make one offer to one target market using one lead magnet on one platform for one year. Mm-hmm. And that was the single best piece of advice I ever got. And I share it with you today in the hopes that you embrace it because you need to commit for a year to a process. And, you know, I just I just launched another thing recently that is to a new market. And it, well, recently, like six months ago, and I we had some some false starts on it. I mean, the first time I tried it, I was I was doing a different class every single month. It was a program called Ascend. It's still up and running. But in the beginning, it was tough getting people in the door. And be, that was because every single month, it was a different class because I was building a year-long curriculum on how to get a spiritual business off the ground, right? And I committed in the beginning to all of the classes, And I'm like, here are all the classes. They are scheduled out. It's actually 13 months long because I needed that much time to cover everything. And I committed to all the classes and I sold one in the first month or first two months, somewhere around there. So I was now committed to running these things. I could not stop. 
because I'd already sold the class, right? And my integrity won't let me say, well, I'm not going to do it because I didn't get it to sell and whatever else, right? So it made me commit. And that commitment has resulted in getting a lot more. What's happening is that I found a different pathway to bring people into the program that I had originally thought I was going to use, thought I was going to use social media. And I had started a newsletter and the newsletter's got like a thousand people following it. And that is not how people are coming in. And then the social media posts got zero interaction. So I actually had to find another path, which was direct outreach on LinkedIn, right? But each time I'm iterating, right? And I'm iterating and I'm iterating. And, you know, it's it, it has become this process that just sort of shows up along the way, right? And that wouldn't have happened had I done my old pattern of the pa- panic pivot, Because I would have gone, oh, that doesn't work. The universe doesn't approve. Okay, maybe not this for me, right? Mm -hmm. And instead, what's happening is that, you know, people are coming in, they're transitioning into my spiritual coach certification program, they're doing a bunch of a bunch of other things around my business and being involved in things. And so what's, you know, it's been this interesting evolution. But it wouldn't have happened if I had quit six months ago, when it first didn't go anywhere, or, you know, one person came in, you know? And so this is the thing is that we don't want to commit because we're like, well, what if it doesn't work? Okay. Well, what if it doesn't work? You figure out how to make it work, right? It's not a matter of will it work or not? It's how does it work? It's a, it's a, it's a mystery to be solved. Right. And, and you, you said, uh, you know, we expect that business is going to be easy or, or, you know, that it's going to happen quickly. And I almost barked out laughing because after 35 years in business, I have never had anything be easy or happen quickly or anything. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm 35 years in at this point and I know a lot about business and, you know, things just, not everything works out the way you think it's going to. It's just the way it is, you know? So, you know, I will say that one of the things that I learned about myself, you you said, you know, ask the question, what do we learn, right? One mm-hmm. of the things that I learned about myself, and I'm going to talk to people who are a little further along in their business right now, is what I learned is that I have a tendency to push, 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 get burned out, mm-hmm. and then right at the edge of success, quit because I'm too tired. Okay, that Mm -hmm. has been my pattern um, up until I noticed it, right? I I noticed it a couple years ago. And I was like, Oh, look at look at what I do there. (laughs) Ah, that's interesting. And so (laughs) yeah, and so you know, the key has been to not letting me get myself to burnout, right? That's been the key is to not push to stay out of the push energy and to really, really manage my energy better so that I don't quit at the edge of success. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, these are the sorts of things that that you learn when you are conscious about the process. Yeah. I'm going to throw that back over to you because I know yeah. you I know you have some more to say, but I just wanted to share. So that really, you know, that really fits with what we talked about um, in the last episode too, which was agreements and what are you making an agreement with? And that there was for you at that time, an agreement with it's got to be hard or it's got to, I've got to, I've got to be in push energy to get any kind of result. And so, you know, there's this really interesting, it's not a dynamic, it's not a pattern, but there's just this interesting thing where we're holding, we're, we're holding the knowing that it's likely to take time Mm -hmm. that we're, you know, it's likely to require consistent effort, right? And there's that power in consistency and making those incremental gains. So I'm not going zero to 100 in one month, I'm going, you know, 1%, 2%. To do that, you got to measure it as well, right? And so you've got to be kind of neutral. And Kelly, you talked about that in your example, where, okay, well, this here's I'm committed, So the power of being committed to a decision, I am doing this one thing, this is my offer to this target market, right? Mm -hmm. And I have committed to it. So when we actually make a commitment to something, we become solid state in it. There's an energetic shift that happens. And there's this, I am, I am doing this, I am committed to doing this. And I'm also neutral with the results. So I'm committed to doing this. And I'm observing and noticing 
I'm okay. I've like tried it this way. I'm in an experimentation. This is not the, you know, this is not maybe the way that I'm getting the results that I need, or I'm going to try it this way, but I'm committed to doing this one thing. So when we actually make that commitment, there is a, there's a, a state change. There's an energetic f- a frequency change, right? And so then we can become more open to inspired ideas for the ways that it will work. And I had something else I wanted to say, and I totally gapped it right out. <laughs> help, help. <laughs> I don't know. I don't read your mind yet. <laughs> well, I, I do want to go back to the the power of consistency on this, because this is one of the ways in which we commit is the power of consistency, right? And yeah. when we are inconsistent with our actions, that's when we are out of we're out of integrity with our commitment, right? And so this is, you know, people talk to me all the time because I've been podcasting for a really long time. This is a new podcast for me, but I've been podcasting for years. And I podcasted every week for 6 years and I've only missed like two episodes in six years. And that's because I was sick as a dog, right? And so, you know, this is a consistency piece, right? There's a a piece where people, they, they don't, they don't stay true to their commitments. And this is why it's important to know what you can do for a long period and what you can't do. So I have learned about myself that I can show up and sit here and have a conversation with somebody else once a week for the rest of my freaking life. I can do that. I have no problems with that. But what I can't do consistently is get on social media and do reels and TikToks and lives and things like that. I know because I have tried and I suck at it. I do it for two or three weeks. I do it really well. And then I just have no energy for it. And so it's really important to know what you do well and what you don't do well and what you can commit to and what you can't. I know that sitting down and writing long form copy, despite the fact that I'm good at it, drains my energy. It does not give me energy, but I can sit here and talk on podcasts all day long and I'll have plenty of energy at the end of the day. No problem. So this is another piece to the puzzle of uh, identifying where your power of consistency is is determining what feeds you and what drains you. What can you give consistently? What can you not give consistently? And sometimes we we do better in stages, right? So my friend, Kathy, who is, she's a transformational shaman as well. And she works with me in my spirit guide school. Uh, she loves to work in short bursts. She's like, put me on for three months in a row. I will work my butt off every day, no break. And then I want a month off. That's how she likes to work. That's how her body works. She's just a workhorse. That's her thing. Me, I'm like, I will work for a week and then I need a couple of days off. You know, I will. And, but I only want to work like six, five, six hours a day. I don't have the energy for more than that. I don't want to, right? I want to have a lot of free time. And so, you know, you have to know how you like to work and you have to know if you want to work with small groups or large groups or individuals one-on-one, you know, know how you work best and then plan your business around that so that you can be consistent and you don't do the panic pivot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the, the panic pivot for any gardeners out there, it's like, it's like you go to a, a garden and you're planting a seed and then you, in two weeks, you're digging it up to see if it's like anything's happening. So of course you've like just killed it, right? <laughs> so you can think about the commitment as, okay, I'm planting this garden. So I have planted the seed and I'm committed to growing that seed. That's the commitment to the, whatever your project is, your offer, you know, what it is. And then your doing the thing. So you're watering it, you're fertilizing it. There's some, maybe some experimentation and, oh, like I actually need to, it needs like a, you know, like a 20, 20, 20, or needs a 15, 30, 15, or it needs this kind of compost, or it, you know, likes to have its feet wet or likes a little bit of shade. So that's the experimentation piece, but the commitment is I am growing this plant. It right. is going to happen. And the panic pivot is like you plant a seed and then you pull it out because you haven't seen any results yet. And so what's going to happen? Nothing. Right. Yeah. And that's a great analogy because that's exactly the case, right? So when we commit, we tell the universe, 
yo, get this going, right? Mm -hmm. That's where the universe comes in as a partner and it goes, oh, you're serious about this one? Oh, okay. Well, I'll get on board. If you're serious about this, I'll get on board. But, you know, mm -hmm. you've been experimenting for so long. I've kind of given up on trying to give you anything because you changed your mind before I can get you anything. So, you know, I was just going to sit back and wait until you made a commitment. That's what's going on, guys. Totally. The universe is going, uh, let me know when you're serious. Yeah. And commitment is what makes you serious. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I like to think of that as there's uh, there's like this invisible line that we can't see, right? And what happens is we like we come up to it and we're like, okay, I'm gonna like I'm gonna do this thing now. And the universe is on the other side, like, okay, okay, right, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, ah, but I don't know. And the universe is like, ah, and then we like come back up against it, and the universe is all excited again, ready to work with us. And then we back off again, and just gets into this you know dynamic where we never actually take that step into being able to really leverage the partnership of the universe. Yeah, absolutely true. And that is, you know, it's it's very funny too, because in the beginning stages of spiritual growth, one of the things that happens a lot with people like us is we, we get into a push me, pull you with our guides. Our guides mm -hmm. say, do this. And we go, fuck you. <laughs> I'm not doing that. You're I'm not, not the boss of me. No, no. <laughs> our inner two-year-old comes out and goes, no. I don't want to. <laughs> and, and, and we end up in this, like, you know, really combative relationship with our guides. And the, and it, it plays over into business as well. You know, you get into this sort of warrior mindset with your business and you're like, oh, I'm going to power through. I'm going to make you go. I'm going to la, 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 la. And, and the problem with the warrior mindset with your business is that one, it's exhausting. And so it burns you out pretty quick. And two, it's actually a combative relationship with your business, mm -hmm. which is really a bad energetic dynamic, right? It, it really is because you are coming at your business from a place of, I must fight to make it go mm -hmm. instead of stepping into, oh, you know, this is, this can be easy if I bring that energy in. And that was the other thing that I became aware of a few years ago was the idea that I have, you know, I took Sparta as my last name when I got divorced <laughs> in 1998. <laughs> you think I was in a little, little, little bit of warrior energy at the time? Mm, I think so. I so. <laughs> Just a little bit. And I realized that when I started this business, I really brought that energy, that warrior energy. I took it to a spiritual warrior state, but it was still a warrior state, right? I brought that energy into my business and then I brought it into my podcast that, that I had before and I brought it into everything I was doing. Even though I was trying to transcend it at the same time, there was that energy of I've got to fight for everything. I've got to work hard. I've got to, and which is so weird for me because I was the kid who was always, I live a charmed life and everything just works out easily for me. So much so that I actually lost a friend right around the same time as I started this business because she got pissed at me because I thought everything could be easy and it often was for me. And she got mad because it wasn't for her because she was attached to it being hard. Uh, and so I would spend over it. Yeah. That is powerful, right? To 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 notice it's it's profound, really, right? Like our frequency, the energy that we're bringing, it's 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 what we're creating in our life. So if that frequency is fight, 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 well, then of course, that's what's going to be reflected back to us. Right. So Kelly, how have you been shifting into I live a charm life? Like, how do you reclaim or step into that? So the, the piece that's different for me now is I'm not looking for ways in which it's going to be hard anymore. Mm. I'm really... I'm I'm not looking to do the most I can do anymore either. So there was a way in which I was I, I held a lot of pride around, you know, look how much I get done, look how hard I work. I deserve this. And part of that was my relationship with my father who never saw me as being disciplined and never saw me as having what it takes to be successful in business and just no matter what I did, it didn't matter, right? He had his ideas. And you know, part of it was me trying to prove myself to him, right? He passed away back in 2017. And there was a, there was a, a shift for me because I was like, oh, I don't have to impress dad anymore. Huh? Hmm, okay. 
And I had this moment of reconciliation with him when he crossed over and there was this, there was all kinds of good stuff that happened, not relevant to this, this conversation, but wow. the, the, the shift that happened inside of me there because this was another argument that he and I used to have, right? He would say, well, if you were miserable at your job, and of course, I don't work a job, I run a business, but whatever, uh, you know, if you were miserable at your job, what would you do? I'd say quit and find another job. And he's like, see, that's what's wrong with you. You have no discipline. And I'm like, no, that's what's wrong with you. You're committed to your misery. You know, it was like, you know, I was just like, it, it was this, this inherent thing. But this was part of the dynamic that was going into my business. And I was unconscious of it. It was this, I've got to prove to my dad that I, this is the, you know, the right path and that I'm doing the right thing and all of the stuff. And, and none of that was relevant. You know, I, I just needed to, to bring my own wisdom into the world and I just needed to be who I was. And that was the message I was getting over and over again, actually, like almost a decade, well, like six, six or seven years before that, the universe just kept giving me the message over and over again, be who you are, be who you are, be who you are. And I was like, what does that mean? I don't understand, right? <laughs> and then I get it. <laughs> well, I, you know, the weird part about it is, is that I had this thought that I don't know if you know who Amachi is, but Amachi is a, the hugging saint, and she goes around and just hugs people. And in my head, be who you are meant be Amachi because mm-hmm. she got paid to just hug people. You know, she she. That was what she did. People came and supported her and just made things happen. And I was okay. like, I don't know how to be Amachi, right? <laughs> and it's be who you are became be Amachi, which is the stupidest thing I've ever. It was just so bizarre, right? You're just like, wait, how did that happen? And none of my friends called me on that, but which was really funny. But what was really funny at that time was that I was sitting and having this same conversation with my bless her long suffering friend Melody who she listened to me say the same thing over and over and over again. And I swear to God, I, I if I had been her, I would have smacked me because I'd said it so many times. And she just she just listened and she held space. And I was having this conversation. And this woman that I knew from festivals walked into the Starbucks we were having the conversation at. And she said, she, she came in and I looked at her. I was like, oh my God, what happened to you? And she's like, I... I don't know because she's her aura was totally screwed up. Right. And she, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've been to doctors. I've been to specialists. Nobody can tell me it was wrong, but something's wrong. I'm like, yeah, your aura is totally screwed. I said, stand still. And I shoved her back in her body and rearranged her aura and healed up all of the, the, the tears and the rips in it. And, you know, got her grounded again and got her energy flowing in the right way. And it took me about three minutes in the middle of Starbucks. People were staring, but I didn't care. And so, you know, and I was like, better? And she's like, oh my God, yes, thank you. And she, I was like, go get your coffee. I'll be over here. And so I went back to my friend and we're sitting and chatting some more and I'm going, ah, be who you are, be who you are. What does that mean? <laughs> and I'm literally having this conversation with my friend again when when this the woman walks back up and having her gotten her coffee and she walks up to be who you are. What does that mean? And she looks at me and she, with her mouth agape and she goes, have you met you? And I'm like, What? What are you talking about? And she said, have you met you? You, I just told you, I went to doctors, I went to specialists, I went to everybody I knew, and nobody could tell me what was wrong with me. And I walked into a freaking Starbucks. I did not tell you I didn't feel right. You immediately saw what the problem was and fixed it in under three minutes. Have you met you? And I went, yeah, well, uh, yeah but I don't know how to do anything with that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> literally I couldn't hold it i couldn't hold it this was like 2010 you know it was 20 2011 and so something oh. like that i i you know it was a it was a while before i was able to hold it and that's that was the interesting piece and this is one of the things that causes us to do the panic pivot too is that we we hold these identities and we don't know how to value them and we'll talk about that in another podcast and mm-hmm. we don't know how to stand in them and we'll talk about that in another podcast. And, you know, we, there's just so many things that stop us from being successful. And yeah. the warrior peace was part of that for me because that part was easy. All the things that she said, you know, have you met you? I'm like, well, oh, that's just easy. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, then they can't, that can't be the thing, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. and yeah. then that's the piece, uh. right? I was committed to the to the path of having to fight through it. And I had it handed to me. 
and I ignored it. Yeah. So what yeah. if it was easy? So what if it was easy? That's the question. It was easy. Right? Oh, what yeah. if it was easy? Yeah. yeah. So, but that's, you know, I, I feel like we've, we've talked for quite a while on this topic. And so I, I want to wrap up for the day. I think what we're going to say to wrap up today is going to be mm, commit, right? Mm. When it comes down to it, that's the end, end goal is to commit. Yeah. Yeah. When you're, you know, when we're interested in, there's a difference between being interested in something and committed. And when you're committed, your life reflects it. Someone could look at you and say, someone who doesn't know you and say, oh, that's what they're committed to. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's that's our thought for you for today. Uh, we will see you, uh, Catherine and I will see you next week. I will see you tomorrow on our uh, Thursday Thoughts Day. And uh, that's it for today. Remember that where you place your attention is what you attract. Where you place your intention is what you create. So choose wisely, young Jedi. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,